Hi, my name is Michelle Smith. I've always loved a pretty font, and when it comes to Google Slides, well, they just don't offer any pretty fonts, and so I have figured out how to make those pretty fonts in PowerPoint and then upload them into Google Classroom. We're talking the gradient features, um, the outlines, everything to make it look really good. So let's get ready to teach it on up. Okay, I am in PowerPoint and I've created a new presentation. And what I'm gonna do first is I'm just going to get rid of these text boxes. So I highlight them and just push delete. Now I'm gonna go over here to insert a new text box so I can just start fresh. And I want my students to correct these sentences, okay? Now I don't want that to be my font. I have purchased some really amazing font, amazing fonts on Teachers Pay Teachers, and they are the Amy Grossbeck fonts, and they are worth every penny. I love them. So I always like the joy of missing out solid. And so there it is, but it's pretty small. I want it to fill in the entire thing. So I'm gonna pump up the size. Let's hope that fits perfect. Um, I might take that down just a little bit, just because, um, I don't want it to take up too much room. All right, and so I'm gonna have my students correct the sentences that I'm also about to type, but just for the title of this, I want to make that my pretty font. So first things first is I am going to make a copy of this because I want one of these to be an outline and one of these to be my text fill, and I'll show you what I mean in just a minute. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I have my four lines, I'm gonna do a copy, oop, not cut, let me paste that back in for you. All right, now I'm going to copy, or I can push Command C, and now I'm gonna push Paste, and now I have two copies of this, same size, okay? One of these, right up here, I'm going to make, actually I'll make this one my outline because that is my newest one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight all of this. I'm gonna go up here to Shape Format, and you're gonna see this little A with an outline. I'm gonna click that. And you're gonna notice the font changes just a little tiny bit, but not too much. Then I'm gonna go over here to No Fill. And so you can see I have my outline now. And if I were to drag this on top, like you could see over it. And I'm gonna change the colors in just a little bit to make it so that you can really see the difference. Now these lines are pretty thin, but I like a good thick heavy line. So I'm gonna go over here to Weight, and I am going to do a four and a half um, weight, weighted line, okay? So now I have my big, thick line, but this is still black, and so I don't necessarily want that. So I'm gonna highlight all of that, and if I just want it to be one color, like I'm going to do right now, then I go over here, and let's say, mm, I'm not too keen on these colors that I see right here. I'm gonna go to more fill colors, and I'm going to, to use my slider. and go over here, because I like the bright colors. And let's do, I love purple, purple's my favorite. Right there. Okay, so now I have my purple and I have my black outlined. And if I click and I drag this up, then that will be outlined, okay? Now let's say I wanted to make this a gradient. Like I wanted it to look kind of ombre-ish. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here to gradient. And do you see I can do um, like a centered gradient. So the darker is on in the middle. And if I drag this up, It'll look really pretty like that. And so if I wanted to do, just do a one color gradient, that's how I would do it. Now let's say I wanted to do many colors. What I would do then is I would um, highlight all of those, and then I'd come over here and I'd do a two finger click, and I'd say format text effects, okay? And it's gonna bring this up over here. We go over here to text fill. Now do you see all these gradient stops? Well, I can add more gradient stops. And so I'm gonna add a few more, and then I can spread them out. See how I can go over here. And it's gonna change, as you see that I'm dragging these around over here to the right, it's going to change the spacing of my gradient over here. Now let's say I want to go from this purple over here, but I want to make it eventually land on like a green and a turquoise, okay? So I'm gonna start with my purple, and then I'm gonna go over here to this one. So I want these two to be my purples. Then I want this one right here to start into a green. And I'm gonna go 
more fill colors and I'm gonna drag my little thing or if you have colors you already have picked out then you can do that actually I'm gonna have it go to a blue okay I think that'll be pretty Ooh, and so look it's already kind of changing um, but I'm gonna have to change all of these to get it to where I want it to like be a nice smooth transition so I keep going over here to more colors I drag it and I want this to be a little bit of a lighter one and I'm gonna go over here and I want this to start becoming a green so I'm gonna drag it over here to the green I want it to start out lighter and I'm gonna have it go darker and more colors drag it over here to a darker green let's do that one and over here let's have it land on a nice pretty like greenish yellow Ooh, that's not very pretty. Maybe yellow. Yellow might be the ticket. That might be a good transition. Anyway, and you can have it be whatever colors you want. Okay, so I can drag that to adjust how colorful I want it. Now, I might not like the way that it is the radial. Uh, see how radial means like it's in a radius, like it's going in a circle. I'm not a math teacher, but I do know that. So I want it to be a line. So I want it to go linear, and it looks like it's going like from top to bottom. I want it to go straight across. So direction let's have it go like this okay see how that you can change it with the direction so this is just like it shows you the direction that it would go so I'm not wild about these colors but it's okay I think that'll look better once I get my outline on it and it'll really kind of set it apart see just like that okay and so that is how I would do um, the outline and then now it's just set but that's not all I want on my Google Slides presentation. I want them to actually correct the sentences, but I don't want them to be able to like manipulate the sentences. I want to use our editing marks that we've been practicing in class. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to insert another text box. And let's just say, um, Mrs. Oh, it's going to automatically correct on me. Mrs. Smith is a teacher at our school okay and so that would be the sentence I would want them to correct that's one of them and they would use need to use their editing marks for that but I want to make it bigger because when they're using their draw tool on Google Slides it's um, they need plenty of space so because we have Chromebooks we don't have iPads so I'm gonna again highlight this and I'm gonna pump up the size and I'm going to, let's see, right here. I like this font. There we go. So that's going to be our first sentence. Let's make another sentence. Do you have any gray coupon and they're not going to have any idea what that means and so okay so when I'm correcting my sentences I don't want that to regular squiggly to be in there so I'm just gonna push ignore all ignore all I don't want to add it to dictionary um, but so we're gonna see if they can figure out what that means and then um, I am NOT a Chiefs fan and since the Chiefs just played in the Super Bowl last night and they lost I'm gonna have that be, so I always like to do like a declarative or um, imperative sentence, uh, an interrogative sentence, an exclamatory sentence, just so they can practice using those different punctuation marks. So I'm, my last one is going to be the, oh, I'll have it corrected, or Chiefs didn't not win the Okay, and I'm going to just tell it to ignore that. I'm gonna center it back up, there we go. Okay, and I'm gonna leave plenty of space in between. What's it telling me here? Let's ignore, where is the ignore feature? <laughs> I don't see it, do you guys see it? I'm not gonna worry about that. It can underline it if it wants to. I am, however, going to ignore this one. Okay, so now we have this over here. And how do I get this into my Google Slide? Well, I'm going to show you. So what you do is you highlight all of it. So I just click and drag, and it's going to look like that. And I'm going to two-finger click on this over here, and I'm just going to go save as picture. 
And I'm going to say correct sentences. Okay, and it's gonna go in my pictures. Actually, I'm gonna want it to go to my desktop just because that's an easier place for me to find it. You can have it go anywhere you want to and you can just click right there to drag it around. Okay, save. Then I'm gonna go back to my Google Slides presentation over here and I am going to, again, highlight it all and delete. Now, I am going to have my picture be my background because I don't want the students to be able to move these pictures around. I want them to stay put. So I'm gonna make it my background on here where they can, um, they can use the draw tool to manipulate that. So here's my file, correct sentences. And I'm gonna say done. And there it is. Now it looks a little bit wonky. That's only because I had this like all the way stretched out. And these, you can change the size of these, but now they can't, like if they click around on here, they can't move anything. But they can come up here and add text boxes if they wanna add a text box to correct it. Um, so they could say, you know, Mrs. Smith is a teacher at our school. So they could just do it that way. If you want to, like, what I want them to do is I want them to use their um, editing marks so they can come over here and do the scribble feature. And they can just do the three lines whenever it decides to work for me. <laughs> anyway, it'll work for the kids. Um, but and then I would just assign this into Google Classroom and make a copy for everybody and it has the pretty font, the kids always love it. It's a lot more engaging or I could even, if you have Pear Deck, I could go up here to my Pear Deck add-on um, and then it'll open it up and I can see them annotate the text in real time. So I would just make it a draw feature over here and um, doo -doo -doo -doo, our happy little pear is going to dance. And then whenever they open this up with Pear Deck, then they can use those features and the draw tool also has a text tool so they could do either way. They love it, I get a copy of everything. So make sure that you assign this and make a copy for each of your students so you can get those assignments back. And this is just a really fun way to jazz up your presentations. Um, email me if you have any questions or comment, like, let me know what else you would like to see. All right, I hope you guys have a great day.